Um, my name is Abigail Davidson. I am the owner, founder, and CEO of Shondelight Enterprises. Shondelight Enterprises is a full-service digital marketing agency. We are based out of Illinois. I have a, the primary location there. I am in the process of opening a location here in Nevada. Um, under the Shine Delight umbrella, we have a few standalone LLCs, but this is our primary um, industry, which is marketing. Okay, so the, what I wanted to talk about today, um, which seems to be the theme for the different events that I've been coming to here at Tech Alley each month, is the strategy in marketing. As a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, whatever you're calling that entrepreneur, the mompreneur, the solepreneur, <laughs> thatpreneur, like whatever that looks like, everyone has concerns around strategy. They want to know that they've created the right strategy to get the right um, results. They want to know that they've created the right strategy that is going to be something that they can repurpose and continue to use to continue to drive results. And then they want to know that those results are going to continue to work for them. So I, these are seven essentials that we implement into all of our um, clients' marketing campaigns. So I'm just going to go over them with you. If you have any questions, just or comments, feel free to just speak or, you know, don't raise your hand because I won't see you. <laughs> just kind of say what you need to say. So, and these are in no particular order, so I'm kind of going to just start with customer acquisition. And we kind of were talking about it in a previous session where we identify who our customer is. We have a general idea of how to reach them. And if you don't, I highly recommend geotargeting because that's going to help you figure out who your customer is, how to target them, and then the one thing that nobody speaks about, day party. The time of the day in which you reach them. You put all this content out there, but your customer is online at 7 p.m. and you posted everything at 3 a.m. in the morning. Kind of aligning your strategies and your campaigns to when your ideal customer is online is going to help you to get that maximum result. And the best way to do that is with day party and geo-targeting. So once you have that customer acquisition in place, the next thing you're going to want to create is a journey, a customer journey. Usually I have a picture, um, and I can kind of just give you an illustration, but think about it like the landscaper like builds out this beautiful <laughs> um, area where the sidewalk is telling the customer, you know, walk this way, like kind of walk all the way around to get to wherever it is that you want the person to get to, and then the customer sees a clear path through and they walk through the grass. And now it's like, okay, well, your beautiful landscape, um, perfectly engineered journey is not how your customers find you, access your content, come to your website, purchase your products. They've cre literally created their own path. So with that in mind, what we tend to do is create the journey around the customer themselves because the priority at all times is the customer experience. So if the customer isn't having a great experience, then you're not going to get the true results that you're going to be wanting to have, which is revenue and sales, if the customer isn't having a great experience and the journey is the main one. This is the key to make, ensuring that your customer um, gets to your call of action, comes to your website, makes a purchase, schedules a, a consultation, um, signs up for your newsletter, whatever that call of action looks like, the customer journey is going to help them to have that. So when you're building out that customer journey, the next thing you're thinking about is that marketing strategy with the jur customer journey in mind. After you've come to understand who your customer is, how do I strategically create campaigns? Where do I place them so that my customer sees them at the time of the day that they're most likely to be online 
and I get the results that I'm actually looking for. Digital platform advertising. So generally when you think about advertising, you're thinking about what you're paying. And a lot of advertising on social media, if you notice, is organic. Um, I would like to say, you know, like companies are figuring out if I just post some organic content and I get people to respond and follow, like we talked about in a previous session, they're going to refer out, they're going to start talking about it. I started a so, um, social media group on LinkedIn and Facebook and all of the, the group followers came from one follower who was so inspired by everything that I had done for her, customer experience, without even realizing it, um, didn't charge. I never, you know, I didn't, wasn't charging anything. I was just giving out free business tips, free business advice, kind of mentorship style conversations. Because of inflation, a lot of small businesses are just really trying to figure out what to do, what to do to stay relevant, what to do to keep their business alive and keep their customers um, coming back. And when I did that, with the organic advertising, that's when she, you know, she reached out and was like, okay, I got you. Sent over 98 people. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. You, you know, because she was so um, happy about the experience that she had. Now there's 98 people that I'm also helping to have that same experience by pro um, providing those resources on LinkedIn and, and Facebook. So when you're thinking about organic and paid, what that looks like, we tend to say SEO, search engine optimization. And when we think about paid, we think about search engine marketing. Um, we, use, we use like an ad scheduler. So if you, and I know I spelled that wrong, if you use an ad scheduler, and you can use a, a variety of different platforms, what it allows you to do is to create both organic and small spin ads that are going to literally be in newsletters, be in landing pages, be in, I don't know if you're familiar with Bing, but that little carousel, the never ending carousel, that's where your content is going to be and it's going to be on Google and social media. And if you're into like the, um, the games on the apps, your ads would even be on those gaming um, apps where you're, where it's like you get a free, um, free money or free tickets, like whatever the game is, for watching the ad, they'll be watching your ad if you use the ad scheduler. Then when you get to where you've created the organic and paid and not so much um, focusing on, like we tend to think with SEM, Google is like the primary. So people think, oh, I need to create a bunch of ads on Google, and they have no idea how to do that. <laughs> so there is a free resource. It's called Google My Business. You create a free business profile on Google My Business, and then whatever you post in the ad scheduler automatically posts free to Google My Business, and now you have more organic ways to um, market your business and, and gain visibility. And what you're creating at this point when you get to Google My Business and a free Yelp business profile and then a free next door business profile, which is going to do the same things from the ad scheduler, what you're creating then is your digital footprint. And then once you kind of have that, um, it could be a reel, it could be a story, it could be a video, it can be, um, what we like to post is like full, we like stories, so we like to tell brand stories, old fashioned style, like what you would see in a magazine where, think of Lagerfeld or, you know, with the stories in the, in the magazine where they're introducing the brand into the lifestyle. So we kind of take those stories and that's what you'll see on our business profiles is where we're telling those brand stories as a lifestyle and with the product being used by the customer. The next, um, the next strategy, analytics. How do I measure? How do I know what I'm doing is effective? 
how do I know what I'm doing needs changes, like what those changes will look like. The best analytics platform for me is LinkedIn with the impressions. Impressions kind of give you a full scope of what it is that you've kind of put out there and what your customer base is responding to, when they're responding to it, and if they're resharing it, what that looks like. Um, Meta has analytics as well. Most websites, if you use like, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you, Monster Insight is the best one. Monster Insight will give you, and this is free, Monster Insight will give you the same analytics that you would get from LinkedIn, Meta, and Google all in one. So then once you have your analytics, you kind of create like, um, I, we create a deck. So we look at the deck and we say, which, which of our content worked, didn't work, or can have some changes made to it. Then once you take the, those analytics and you make the, sorry, once you get the data from your analytics, then you take those um, posts, content. Go ahead. The baseline. The baseline, yes. You take all of that content and then you repurpose it. Um, retarget it online, but repurpose it. Turn it into something else, take the story, add it to another type of content, tweak the story, make your changes to the content, then revive it online. Keep it in circulation. We generally run about a 70, we run a 75 day, nonstop, every single day, three times a day, um, content posting from the ad scheduler. So once we repurpose and recycle this content, it all goes back in and then it pushes back out on another 75 day rotation. As it relates to AI, what we tend to generally do with AI is kind of, we teach it. <laughs> um, and if clients are interested in using it, most of the, the software that we use have AI built into it now. So we will kind of like look at it a little bit and kind of see if we can add the AI to the content that's going out. And when we can, we'll do that. The one thing with AI, um, because it is like the sensation now, is I want people to understand that it doesn't replace your content strategies. It does not replace the, you know, any, any marketing style strategies. What it is is a tool. So when you're using AI, you're using it as a tool in addition to whatever else that you're doing. Yes? So that what you just shared with us about mm -hmm. scheduling and being aware of when customers have been experiencing, that they, yeah. was a lower level AI before it was considered AI, wasn't it? I mean, well, before, well, I can't even say before AI because AI has been around for some time. It's just what machine learning has been, been used in different contexts. Automation is part of yeah. Machine yeah. Automation and marketing is going to save you time, resources, and really give, give you time back in your day and your team back in your day. So but the only thing I'm saying with artificial intelligence is figure out a way to automate these processes. And if you use a, a scheduler, that's the bulk of your automation right there because it's built into the platform. Can you give some examples of how you use AI in marketing specifically? Mm -hmm. Social media. Um, now they're asking for disclaimers to be on the post because before it was like, we don't know who wrote this content. <laughs> and for me, it wasn't something that I was ready to introduce into my company right away because I am a literary buff, so I am all about the author's voice. And I kind of feel like with the machine learning, it, it talks like a machine. <laughs> There's no author's voice. And the excitement to read a story is no longer there if I'm going to go to the story and it's just going to be all keyword specific content for the algorithm on Google. So you're saying basically, Product and when mention these things and it produces it and that's what you're 
considering using AI? Mm -hmm. If you're using AI for chat GBT, yes. Most of the, now most of, if not all, there's like 90% 90, 90 of any software solution has an AI, AI generator attached, even WordPress now. So if you have a website, um, there is ways to create landing pages in WordPress using AI specifically. And then you're telling it what you want it to say. And you can say, well, tell a funny story, but it's still a machine. Right. It's going to tell a machine's version of a funny story. And that excitement to read what the blogger is writing this week, what the, you know, like whatever the ad content that's going out, whoever the author is, to read and hear their voice and identify the product with what they're telling in that story, AI hasn't figured out how to do that. So what they're asking now is whenever you post something online that has AI, because you still have to fact check it, you still have to screen it for grammar, before you publish it online, you have to make sure that it reads like it makes sense. So with that in mind, what we tend to focus on is dynamic keywords. This is old fashioned SEO. What are the keywords? What are the dynamic keywords for whatever it is, the product, the service that you're putting out or the ad or whatever, whatever the, whatever's going out, what are the keywords that is gonna allow you to tell that story? So, and so using AI and dynamic keywords, it's going to um, help and benefit you when you're posting content online. I kind of sped through that really Sorry. quickly. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a free trick. Google yourself every day. Yeah. Google. Yeah, one, right? yeah. yeah. Google yourself. Google your business every single day, because that's going to boost. That's boosting you. That's boosting your business. But specifically to if you have like. Um, but you mentioned about the keyword. Yeah, you said the hiking. So with hiking, um, so outdoor, right? So outdoor. Um, Outdoor tents, like um, what is it? It's, it's it's not home and garden, but it's it's like the outdoors and travel. You're looking for the keyword that's going to spark your um, product popping up in a search. So there is uh, another. Let me. I can't remember what the name of it is, but there is a free keyword dynamic keyword generator. Um, if you follow me, I can, get, I can get it to you. There's a free keyword generator. So when, when you have those words inside of your content, it's going to pick it up. The, the way you stay relevant is to constantly include those keywords. So if it's camping gear, if it's hiking gear, whatever that gear is, if you're constantly telling a story about that gear and you're posting it, then the machine is picking it up, the algorithm is picking it up, and it's pushing it out to users who are searching for your product. Um, what a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with is how to get that product out there online, how to create that digital footprint so that their business is visible. You have to use those dynamic keywords. That's why AI is a tool that you can use to kind of help you get those keywords out there in your content. 
but telling the story and not just like um, I say Twitter style because Twitter has very limited characters. Every word in that that key um, in, inside of the Twitter post should be nothing but keywords. Maybe the business, like um, what we start with, like oh, so this is fashion, right? And then everything after fashion is a keyword that's going to trigger when someone is searching for different types of fashion, it's going to pop up automatically. Your business is going to be visible to them in that search. So that's, that was what my recommendation would be. Does that make sense? Is there, do you know, is there some kind of database or something like that, you know, that collect all the, because you are in the business, mm -hmm. and then uh, you have so many competitors. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they sell the similar product like you. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, you know, how do you, you know, make sure the keyword they use, because uh, all the business, they probably using the similar keyword they use. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. how do you stand ahead of that? In a certain like, way, you know, mm -hmm. and then maybe I'm using my keyword, but maybe I'm using the first keyword will be like a, a higher way than the other keyword. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it calculate and then the total will have a, you know, maybe score 10 out of, out of 15 or something. I remember this, I remember the tool as you were talking. WordStream. With dynamic keywords, it's not enough to just say, okay, well, this is the word that's going to keep me in the search. When you're competing for someone selling the same shirt, if you're a retailer and you say, you, you're all selling that same shirt, then you're going to, that's another, that's another level, which is the, the bidding keywords. So as, the key in this is dynamic. What features about that shirt? Now you gotta get specific. What features about this shirt is going to distinguish you selling that shirt from say another, um, another online store? This is where you get really specific about the details. What we do with um, retail clients that sell like say fashion and apparel or like um, beauty and hair, products like that, where we know these dynamic keywords are in constant use by other companies, we get very specific about the details of that product. And that's going to help in the search on the consumer end to really push your business to the front of that list because you've added details that they didn't add. Which is why when you go on some product landing pages, it's like, when, where does it end? <laughs> it's because they're, you're, they're not the only person selling that product and they need all of that information to kind of keep their business relevant. And that's where the analytics come in. Mm -hmm. You have to keep checking, you know, yes. are your keywords getting the hits? Yes. If you're not, you've got to change them up. Yes. And then you measure those. And yes. You, and you constantly have to keep revisiting it and we're yes. doing it again and again because yes. people will copy your keywords. Yes. And Yes. It's a search engine optimization. It's a whole science of game. And yes. It's a lot of it. So it's yes. both going up to this pyramid. Yes. Pyramid and having the feedback loop as you need. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is why I, I kind of want to, you know, what I said I wanted to start having conversations because entrepreneurs are really confused about the analytics, about repurpose and revive about artificial intelligence and about dynamic keywords. Like they just think I'm going to make a TikTok video, I'm going to get a million likes, and that's going to sell my product. That's not how it works. <laughs> um, you have to, const this has to be a daily occurrence. You need that data to come into you. Every single day, you should be repurposing and reviving. This is why we run a 75 day um, schedule. Every 75 days, that content is going out every single day, three times a day. You post one time a day, that'll trigger the algorithms. You post three times a day, the relevant content, now people start seeing your business pop up in search. Not, and then with popping up in search, with the right story, with the right presentation, that's when you start addressing your calls to action. That's when people start converting. And the right learner kind of adapted Bill Murray around them. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
and their journey. Always about the customer experience and how they access your content. Blog. Posts. Email. Text message. Add. However way you're putting that content out, make sure you're putting it out with the journey in mind, not with the landscaping, like that pretty little walk all the way around. They're not doing that. They're going to create their own path, always with the customer experience in mind. And I know I went through that really, really quickly. So if we need to unpack it some more, I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Does this help you in your business? Well, yeah. I mean, and I'm glad to have it before the new year. I mean, I actually start my 2024, well, actually, in the past, but definitely this year to try to get myself back on my 13th year. Mm -hmm. Honestly, when you're creating a marketing campaign, you should be a year to two out. This is the... This is how we are. We've, I've been in business now as my own company for six years. When I entered into my business, I had a, I had a campaign all the way up into 2020. Um, actually, 2022. I had a campaign all the way up into 2022. And it should be a working campaign where you can make changes because COVID clearly <laughs> um, came in and was like, wait, whoo. That's not going to work, you know, kind of make some changes there. And then most recently with our e-commerce division, we've had to make great changes because of Timu. I don't know if you guys have heard of Timu, but Timu came in with, and was, I was like, listen, we just got used to Wish. <laughs> we figured out how to compete with Wish. We figured out how to compete with Sheen. We even f figured out how to compete with Walmart, who also sells the same um, types of products. We cannot do this warehouse to consumer thing. Like, it has to be $40 because we're in the United States. <laughs> it cannot be $2.99. We would never make a profit. We have no way to keep up with that subscription based platform. So, we had to rebrand. And, and rebranding, because we were so good in this area, our, analy our analytics, our geo targeting, our day partying, our dynamic keywords and repurposing and revising, we were able to just repurpose all of that content and apply it to new products, higher end products from different suppliers in other countries who we don't have to compete with Timu for because Timu doesn't sell those products. So is, uh, 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 you know, how do you make this uh, decision? Because you know, as a customer, whenever mm -hmm. I search for certain product, you know, usually, I will just uh, you know, look at the first page. Thank you, Google, gentlemen. You know, there's a, there's a, what's it called, carousel, right? They, they mm -hmm. put, you know, pay, you know, advertisement on top. Mm -hmm. right? And then uh, you know, it, it caught your eye because you know, as a customer, I want the quality, but also I want the you know, affordability. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just explain, uh, okay, which one look good? And then, and then, and then, and then the button that I guess, you know, uh, uh, as per recommendation, right? So. Mm -hmm. But as a, as a, a business owner, right, and how do you determine whether I'm willing to pay for this uh, you know, advertisement? Mm -hmm. so, or you know, just uh, optimize my uh, uh, keywords so it will mm -hmm. appear hopefully closer to the first page or the second page. You know, yeah. the, if you have the budget for, ad, for paid ads, what you're referring to, that sponsored content, is generally the business paying for that content to kind of be pushed up <coughs> and presented more frequently online versus if you did it organically, which you can do, which we tend to do both. So we'll create that organic, because the organic traffic is really your true customer base. Those are the people who are paying attention to your brand. Those are the people who are following your social media accounts. Those are the people who are going on your websites, subscribing to your newsletters. Um, signing up for te text messages and, you know, different promotions or whatever you have going on. When you get to a space where you're able to add a little spend, your digital platform advertising is going to be um, helpful. You don't have to spend a lot 
when you first start, we tell, we tell businesses start at $5. You, you spend $5 on, on, a, on a box of french fries. You go to McDonald's, it's $4.89 for french fries. You could afford to spend $5 per day to create an ad set. Um, we teach you how to create an ad set. With the ad set, you can put as many ads as you want into that one ad set, it's unlimited ads, $5 a day. That's how you start. Remember, you're analyzing. You're paying attention to what's working, what's not working. So whatever is not working, you're, you're taking it out of rotation immediately because there's spin behind it. You're reviving it, you're repurposing it, and you're putting it back into ro rotation. You're going to get a full analysis if you use Monster Insight. Monster Insight has a free um, edition where it's going to give you that information that you need to know what ad to keep in, what ad to take out, what ad to retarget with, yeah, and what ad to repurpose with. But start at five dollars. So do you use frameworks like, like business canvas model that says this is the, the customer <coughs> segment, customer channel, and customer relationship that mm -hmm. finds, I guess, your customer so that you can, I guess as you said, use the analytics to, to monetize it? Mm -hmm. So customer acquisition is always front of mind. You're always thinking about who your customer is, how, how you're reaching them, what experience you're providing to them, and whether or not they're enjoying your product. You know they're enjoying your product when you retain them. Retention is the goal. I don't care what your call to action is, you want to retain that customer. You want them to keep coming back to you your product, your website, whatever it is that they need, you want them to keep coming back to you. Okay. All right. Because obviously, you want to get content that they will digest and then ultimately send a message to, to you that you <coughs> up and you know what your customer funnel is so that you get them to um, meeting and signing up for some type of Revenue generating. Mm, whatever your call to action is, donate, buy now, um, sign up for the newsletter. Whatever the call to action is, as long as you're using the right strategies, you're not just getting a one-time donation. You're not getting a one-time sale. I'm going hiking every single summer. Your store is the only store I'm going to think about because you paid attention to those details that the other store didn't pay attention to. You thought about how I would engage with your content and you gave me more details about the product. You gave me more information about how I can use this product in my experience because you told me a story with this product in use. You didn't just say, oh, it curls your hair, it makes it look pretty, um, it heats up the 450. You gave me specifics like, you know, if you're running late, use this product. You can just, you know, you can use it on wet hair, damp hair. Like you're giving me information that relates to my real world experiences that are, yes, that's going to help me each time I use this product. So I'm only going to, eventually, I'm only going to come to you. There's this product that we sell. It's like a little um, fizz product on our e-commerce side. It goes into the toilet and it cleans the toilet. So it's like it breaks up grunt and all this other stuff. Simple product, right? One ninety nine. We sell it for like maybe um, seven dollars plus shipping and handling. We have a customer who buys it in bulk, refers it out to all of her contacts. They flood the website for this product when they run out of it. Why? They can get it from anywhere. They can go to Walmart and get it. <laughs> but they buy it from us because we, we create a, a story about how they can use this product in their everyday life. Mm -hmm. And we provided an experience where there's no hassle for them when they purchase this product from us. So the story that you create is uh, customized for a niche of the customer? It's not like a, you know, one size fits all? No, it's not one size fit all. Okay, so you, but initially you probably have to, you know, uh, have this, uh, try to reach out as much as you can, right? Yes. Broaden the scope, and then you 
So every day or every other uh, certain period of time, you have a different set of uh, uh, targeted you know, uh, notification or email or mm -hmm. whatever to reach your this uh, set of the customer mm -hmm. or this specific uh, product or service. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Now you can gener you can do a general story, like say if it's purses, like. With fashion and apparel, it's very easy to do this because you can break them up in sets. Say it's a purse and it's like a handbag. You can do a general story for a handbag and just swap out the title and swap out the dimensions. No one is going to question that because each time your customer sees it, they're seeing a different purse anyway. So they don't know that it's the same story and then when they are on your website and they see that it's the a sim, you know like the same story, they understand that what's being changed is the product you know the product title and the dimensions, and they're okay with that. So if I understand him. I mean, you said you have like a hiking type business, mm -hmm. and then he, he could potentially have a hiking business and then the season, for instance, that you would be marketing additional gear for them to do winter hiking versus spring or summer. Yes, you know. yes. So the customer acquisition would be, you know, you, you contact, you know, maybe meet up and, and uh, get a list of the potential customer there you know, in this uh, specific uh, niche market. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, you know, either send an advertisement or... or send an email. If you, have a, if you have a customer base, uh -huh. right, you have a customer base, you can send them an email, you can send them a text. They like that. And fashion and apparel and outdoor um, um, products, they love those pop-ups. So send them a text message. Hey, new product alert. You know, you're going camping in the spring. You're going to want this product on your camping trip. Here's why. And then for, you know, like, being a customer that you've been able to retain for, you know, X amount of time, you give them a discount. You know, for you, you're my VIP customer. I'm going to give you an additional 20% yeah. uh, off. <coughs> tell you something about reviews. This is what I've learned about reviews. I don't always pay attention to them, but I, I encourage um, my team to respond to them honestly. And I say honestly because sometimes the customers aren't really customers. They're your competitors. <laughs> they're your, yeah. If you can buy the product from the same supplier that I brought it from, you're not a customer. You're a, you're, you're a competitor. So I all, we, we respond honestly. So if the customer didn't ret read the return policy and we do, a double, we do a double purchase email asking, please read the return policy before we fulfill this order. If we get the response back that they've read the return policy and we process the order, we, re we will reiterate that in the review. Because you cannot be a disgruntled customer when you read that we do not refund monies, we only do exchanges. 
we will give you a credit where you can purchase more product or we will exchange for the exact price or for something else. You read that. You understood that, that we do not give you the refund unless the product is damaged in transit. We ask you to send us a picture of the product that you received because we cannot control shipping. <laughs> as much as we would love to hand deliver it on a cloud, we can't control what happens in shipping. You cannot believe how many my neighbor's uh, package get delivered in front of my door. Mm -hmm. Two or three packages. Mm -hmm. so not, not for me, but it just delivered to my house. Mm -hmm. And my son ordered some product and then didn't get delivered to, to us. And mm -hmm. then, you know, that yeah. was just, a mess. <laughs> or the delivery driver is having a really bad day and he just tosses it up there, not being considerate of what's in the contents of the package. If it's, if it's damaged in transit, absolutely, we will refund your money. If you just decided you, don't, you no longer want the shoes, I have nothing to do with, with you changing your mind about the shoes if the shoes have nothing wrong with them. Case by case scenarios, you come, you know, you come. You send an email, you're not nasty, yes, I will refund you know, for the shoes if you ship them back. So we respond honestly to reviews. So don't worry too much about the reviews because, because people who are reading the reviews, you, even though they say like the Google reviews are like the it reviews, they're not anymore because people have gotten, have gotten turned on to, oh, these are, these are bots. These are people make, you know, like yeah. just trying to sabotage this business. On your website, add the reviews there so that when the person is, is looking at that product on your site, the reviews are there. The stars are there. This is a five-star product. This is our most sold product. Um, this is what the customers have to say about the product. And then on other platforms, like you can, don't ever use Yelp reviews because you, be <laughs> you will be in tears. But there are ways to like use meta reviews. I have lots of reviews on LinkedIn. It just depends on what the platform is that your customers are engaging with most. If you get 20,000 followers on Instagram, pay attention to how your customers are leaving reviews on Instagram. That's where the bulk of your re reviews are. Don't worry about the other platforms because you know that's, a disgrunt that's either a disgruntled customer or a competitor or a bot. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? Come on. <laughs> What's the name of your company again? Shine Delight Enterprises. Okay. Yeah. I've been in business now for February will be six years. I've been doing marketing now for eight, 17 years. March will be 18 years that I've been doing marketing. Um, so I've seen it all. <laughs> but the new age marketing is what, I'm, what we've been referring to it as um, with, with the, a lot of the AI and a lot of the social media. We just want to educate people, like set up realistic expectations. You're not going to go, to, you're not going to put a video on TikTok and be a millionaire tomorrow. Yeah. Like, let's start with that. You know, even if you have a bunch of followers on Instagram, that's not to say that they're gonna buy your product because they're following you on Instagram. You got to take those marketing strategies and engage that audience. You know, are they following you or are they following your products? Once you make that distinction, then you know how to sell to them because then at that point you can sell to them. But what else goes on with your store that you have questions about? I work for a credit card company. Mm -hmm. you know, actually, this, uh, like, at each category requires a lot of the resource to you know, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Because if you run a marketing company, like campaign, right? Mm -hmm. you want to make sure that the money that you spend is actually worth mm -hmm. I, I, working for you. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to spend a million dollars just uh, like come to the toilet. Right? Mm -hmm. So these uh, require a lot of the, you know, Strategy. PhD, they do some kind of <laughs> modeling, mm -hmm. and then, you know, come up with some kind of algorithm and then, you know, doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I wonder just what kind of the, uh, you know, uh, resources 
resource you put into that to, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure, or maybe take advantage of uh, you know, artificial intelligence to you know, make it work for, you know, so it can refine and, 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 and you know, so I to narrow down everything to the, to the, uh, really the, uh, the, the customer and they are ready to buy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They are looking for something and they are ready to buy and mm -hmm. they can afford it. Mm -hmm. Not just, uh, okay, uh, interesting, but okay, nah, I'm sorry, the uh, price is too, too high. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. So, in thinking about credit cards, I don't know if you've been paying attention online, but American Express does, it, does this around this time of year. They highlight the businesses that use their product. So, you'll see sponsored, yes, you'll see sponsored ads, American Express, and then the business that's benefited most from their services, whether it be their, their, their POS, their um, point of sales equipment, whether it be their um, lines of credit that they extend to small businesses, or whether it be like the different levels of um, credit cards that um, American Express offers to um, small, mid-sized and enterprise level businesses. They sponsor those stories and it goes out and it highlights the businesses in the story so you can learn more about the business. And then it gives, um, it all ties back to American Express because then the person viewing it, like you and I, we want that same experience. We want to have a, a great customer experience. So we go to subscribe and apply for that card purchase. So. Now, we don't got, none of us in here got American Express marketing money. <laughs> um, but you can start at that $5 mark. Um, you start at $5 per day, run it consistently, never turn it off. The only thing you're doing is, is repurposing and reviving. You'll start to see, call, see responses to your calls to action. As the people, as your customers are responding, that's when you start upping your spend. The ads that are performing best, that's where you're gonna put a little bit more spin behind. It is a strategy, doesn't take a PhD, but it do take someone, not a machine, paying attention on the back end and kind of making those changes as necessary. I mean, it, it sounds, to use that American Express example, so just like you're presenting mm -hmm. is one form of marketing your business, mm -hmm. but you're also providing us knowledge of how to use your services, mm -hmm. right? And in the AMX case, um, businesses who say, ah, it's too expensive for me, they use this time to, to, to provide examples mm -hmm. of businesses mm -hmm. who know how to use mm -hmm. American Express products mm -hmm. and can say that it has worked for Exactly. And if it worked for them, it can work for me. I just need to get a little bit more educated. So I'm going to click on learn more. And then once I'm comfortable enough with that information that I've received, I'm going to make, go to the next call of action, which is purchase. And that, that's, that's how it is. If I don't have enough information about the product, send me to the space where I can learn a little bit more. And then within that space of learning, give me that call to action, which is subscribe, buy now, whatever that look, call to action looks like. But that's generally what um, American Express is doing most every time this time of year. Um, they're, this year they're really highlighting minority owned businesses, which I like um, because we're the ones who struggle most with understanding finance anyway. Um, and. They're highlighting a lot of women-owned businesses because women are generally taught to not ask for money. So just equating those two, you know, in the same storyline is like, okay, I got this. You know what I mean? You're speaking American Express again? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I got this in that storyline and I can do this too. But that's generally how it works. And that was just an example. So when you do this, uh So do you provide some kind of report or that your customer have to you know, keep track of those? Because some of them may not have a skill to you know, read or, you know, so or you provide some kind of recommendation, you know, that this, uh, uh, you know, uh, is that the a summary, say, okay, uh, there's a trending or, you know, something of, you know, easy to understand or people know, okay, how to make a decision and, change with purpose or you know.
So my, my customer doesn't know anything about this. And yeah, the, the customer, the only way a customer knows anything about this is if the customer is another business owner. As a business owner, the way I shop, because I, I, know, what, I know what I'm looking at, my customer has no clue what a customer acquisition is. Customer, like they don't care, they just wanna know that when they click on these hills, you have them in their size, their color, and it's gonna to get to them in enough time for the event that they're going to wear those shoes at and it's gonna match their outfit. Like they don't care about anything. <laughs> the details, they just wanna know that when they buy from you, they're getting a great experience, and then they're, and they're going to be grateful. They're going to post a picture wearing those shoes, and they're going to send it to. They're going to put it on your social media page. Yeah, you're a business owner using your service, right? Yeah. They want to know the strategy. Yeah. So you, you put it out. You put out a report at the end. Of, so the, all, companies are starting to do it now. Most go out in, in December. You January through March, you're going to see that end of year um, strategy, like whatever worked, like that big hit strategy, um, what those numbers looks like, the reports. Also, I used to work at Alta before I transitioned into corporate, uh, from corporate to my own business. I used to work at Alta, so at the end of the year, we would put out a report on the website for consumers to see, like this is this is what we've done this year. We did this this year because of you. And with this money that we've generated um, this year, we've also done X, Y, and Z. And it's usually like some community-centered um, efforts like uh, food kitchens or um, sending money for aid. Like, we, like they break that down. So for, for the customer, they know that their purchase means something. Like and that is- responsible. Yeah. Shoes, yeah. They donate. They donate yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And something that we do is when when our, our customers buy coats from us, we match those coats and we purchase a coat and we donate it to a shelter. So as long as the customer knows that they're involved, past you know I just needed the shoes for my outfit, then yes, we put that information out on social media and on the website. Companies, they start in December doing it and then they go all the way through to March. So, yeah, for sure. You're welcome. You have any questions? No? Okay, guys, we got through this really quickly. Unless you, are you, okay, remember to follow me. And I don't know if you guys know about Alignable. Alignable is huge. Sign up for a lineable.